bit of products. Welcome to our joint Yearlink and Alloy webinar today. Um, and our webinar uh, this morning will be um, looking at the launch of Yearlink's revolutionary new T4 series of IP funds. Um, and we have uh, joining with us some of the, some of the folks from Yearlink as well this morning. Um, before we get started, um, just a few little housekeeping things as usual at the beginning of uh, our webinars. Um, you can see on the screen here that um, you've got options for either uh, taking your audio feed for the webinar by voice over IP or if um, you prefer um, PSTN audio or you're having problems with, with voice over IP, you can see uh, numbers there for our Australian and New Zealand webinar attendees to dial in from your telephone uh, to get the audio feed on this uh, on this webinar. Uh, and as usual, um, for those of you who've attended webinars with us before, um, a quick mention that you can ask questions in a couple of ways during the webinar. Um, we will be going in a moment to the formal presentation and during the formal presentation uh, all the attendees in the webinar are muted, but you can ask questions by a um, by a chat. So you'll see in your GoToWebinar dashboard um, that you have up on your screen uh, a chat box. Um, if you've got questions that um, you want to ask during the presentation, then um, please fire off a chat question and we'll, we'll answer that as quickly as we can. When we finish the, uh, the formal presentation, we will um, be taking audio questions. Um, and you can ask questions at that point in our Q&A session at the end um, by in, in, in audio over the, uh, for everybody to hear. Um, and you can do that by using your dashboard. Um, there's a little raised hand symbol in there. You click on that and we'll, uh, we'll cue you in to ask your question. Um, and um, you can ask questions of uh, the Alloy guys and also uh, Elsa and Jessica from uh, from Yearlink. Um, okay, so our, pre our presenters today. Um, at the moment, you've got me, Carl Baker. I'm the marketing director at Alloy, uh, and I'm I'll be doing the uh, introduction at the moment, and I'll also moderate the Q and A at the end. Um, the formal presentation on the new T4 T4 series phones. Um, is going to be presented by Scott Young, our product development manager. Um, and as I mentioned a moment ago, joining us um, in the webinar is Jessica Chen, um, one of Yearlink's um, uh, account managers, and Elsa Wu, who's a senior technical support engineer at Yearlink. Uh, Jessica and Elsa will be on hand to answer keyboard questions during the webinar presentation and uh, to take audio questions at the end in our Q&A session. Um, and this is what we're covering today, um, a fairly in-depth uh, look at the new T4, so T4 series phones, um, and we want to make this uh, as tight and focused as, as possible, so we will kick on pretty quickly with this uh, and get into the presentation now. So, handing over to, uh, to Scott Young our um, product development manager. Scott, if you'd like to take us through the presentation. Thank you very much, Carl. Hi, all, and um, thank you all for coming today. First of all, I'd just like you to introduce you to the T4 series IP phones from Yealink. Uh, the T4 series are the latest generation IP phones from Yealink with a new, elegant-looking design and with new advanced features. Some of the main features of the Yealink phones, of the new T4 series Yealink phones, is the gigabit capability, which is available on majority of the models of the T4 series. We also have paperless DSS keys, so no need to replace any of the paper modules that you have it alongside your DSS keys when you change phones or update your DSS keys. This can all be done now electronically mm -hmm. through the phone interface. On 
two of the models in the T4 series. We also have Bluetooth support, which is available via a USB dongle. And also to future-proof um, the customer's investment of the IP phones, we also support IP version 6 and have a range of advanced security functionality. Okay, now two of the recently released phones from the T4 series are the T46G, which was released earlier in the month. Um, this is a large screened color IP phone with a 4.3 inch screen. It has up to 27 paperless DSS keys. Now the keys on the, the physical keys on the on the phone um, is limited to nine, but it also has an option to flip between the screens using the um, more more keys um, button. T46G also has dual port gigabit switch inbuilt into the phone, with one of the ports being a PoE port. So the, so the switch can be powered via a PoE switch. And the SIP T46G supports up to six SIP accounts. So the phone can be registered to six different ITSPs if you wanted to do that, or it can also be registered up to six times on multiple IPPBXs. Now via the optional Bluetooth USB dongle, the T46G also supports Bluetooth headsets. In addition to the Bluetooth headset support, we also have support for the EHS, which can be used for wireless headsets. Now, the latest release of the T4 series is the SIP T42G. This is a monochrome screen phone with a screen size of 2.7 inches. This phone supports up to 15 paperless DSS keys with five usable keys on the physical phone and the sixth key being the key used to switch between the, the pages. Again, the same as the T46G, the T42G has a dual port gigabit Ethernet switch. Again, one of them being a PoE port for connection to PoE switches and the second port being used to connect to your PC. The SIP T42G supports up to three SIP accounts. Can be used with a wired headset with, via the inbuilt headset jack, or can also be used with wireless headsets via the EHS port on the back of the phone as well. Okay, some features of the accessories that are supported via the T4 series phones. We have the new EXP40 graphical LCD expansion module. It has a large graphical display supporting 160 by 320 resolution. It supports up to 20 physical DSS keys, but also supports up to three pages of keys, allowing up to 60 DSS keys to be configured. Now, at this point, the T46G and also the new T48G will support the expansion module. Now, in total, up to six expansion modules can be connected to these phones. As soon as you connect more than two expansion modules, each of the additional expansion modules must be powered via a power supply, external power supply. Now one important feature with the expansion modules and the T40 series is the ability to use an expansion module and the EHS at the same time. So we can connect the expansion module to 
the T46 or T48 and then connect the EHS adapter cable into the expansion module, the second port on the expansion module. Next is the BT40 Bluetooth dongle. This adds Bluetooth support to the T46 and also the T48. The Bluetooth that they're using is version 4 and also supports the enhanced data rate functionality. Moving on to the EHS 36, an older product but also supported by the new T4 series and this can be used for wireless headsets such as Plantronics, CS40s and Jabra headsets and things like that. Now Yalink also have the YHS32, the corded headset, which is a comfortable, nice fitting headset with nice noise cancelling and it's also supported by all the T4 series phones. Okay, now moving on to some of the important features of the new T4 series. First of all, we have its new elegant design, the paperless DSS key support, the Bluetooth support on selected models, and the gigabit and the advanced security functionality. Now we're going to move on and actually go in depth on some of these new features. Okay, looking at the actual design of the IP phone, the new design is a, a very nice look for the Yalink phones. Um, some of the important features of the elegant and ergonomic look of the phones is the non-slip rubber pads. So obviously on your, when the phone's sitting on your desk, when you're picking up the phone and putting down the handset, you don't want the phone moving all over the place. So the non-slip rubber pads help the phone to be stable on your desk. The keypad has nice large buttons that are easy to use. We also have the metallic feature or the texture on the bottom of the phone which adds a, a good look to the phone that will look good in any office. We also have a couple of status keys for the headset and the mute button which obviously change colour based on when they're being used and when they're not being used. All the T4 series also have multiple angle stands, so they can be set in multiple different positions for the user's liking. Okay, now more on the paperless design of the DSS keys. This is a big feature for offices that are all looking at um, being environmentally friendly and also being able to actually change and modify your DSS keys without having to replace the paper module and retype and reprint or, or try and find spare um, paper modules that go inside some of the older phones. Now each of the models support a particular number of DSS keys. So on the T46 we can support up to a maximum of 27 paperless DSS keys, the T42 15, the T41 15 and the expansion module up to 40. Now each of the phones also has a maximum of different pages that can be viewed. T46 3, T42 3, the T41 3 and the expansion module 2. Now the, the bottom button on the phone, bottom right hand button on the phone and also the bottom right hand button, or the, sorry, the bottom buttons on the expansion module are all used to flick between the pages. This allows you to add more than the physical amount of buttons on the phone. Okay, now Going into more detail on the actual Bluetooth support, again, the T46G and T48G all support a Bluetooth headset via the USB Bluetooth dongle. Again, as I spoke about before, all of the T4 series support the EHS module, so they can be used for wireless 
headsets. Now, a big thing to mention again, and I will mention it again, is the ability to support the EXP40 expansion module and the EHS lifter at the same time. A lot of phones have that limitation where if you are using the expansion module, you can't use the EHS because they use the same interface on the back of the phone. But the ability to be, to be able to use the in and out ports on the expansion module to add the EHS is a huge bonus. Okay, moving on to the gigabit support. So all models of the T4 e, T4 series support gigabit except for the T41G. T, sorry, the T41P. T41P is only a fast Ethernet interface. Now the ability to have dual gigabit ports on the back of the phone allows us to connect a PC to the back of the phone and still get the gigabit speeds that we require from our PC applications. All of the T4 series also support IP version 6. So when we're buying and looking at purchasing the new T4 series phones, we know that eventually everything will move to IP version 6. So by future-proofing our investment of our IP phones, by having IP version 6 is another big plus. Okay, security. Security is, has all, always been a big problem for voice over IP. As voice over IP over the years has become more and more popular, more and more times are people getting hacked and receiving large phone bills for people breaking into their system and making illegal phone calls overseas and costing the customer huge amounts of dollars. Now, Normally we look at the hacking problem being on the IP PBX, but it also is possible for IP phones as well. Now if we're connecting IP phones directly to ITSPs or we're running our IP phones behind a hosted solution, these same types of attacks that we see on IP PBXs can also be found on IP phones as well. So Yealink have implemented a lot of advanced security features to help tackle some of these problems. Okay, now some of the security features that Yealink have implemented in the T4 series is HTTPS access to the web management, CTI trusted IP phone, so CTI being computer telephony interface, allowing only certain PCs to be able to control or send um, code to the IP phone. We also have HTTPS provisioning support, and we also have the ability to encrypt the config files that we use in our IP phones. We also support SRTP, so secure RTP, so we can encrypt the RTP stream or the audio stream that we're sending from the phone and receiving from the phone. We also have TLS and also digest authentication which can be used when we're authenticating and, and sending passwords and stuff out from the phone out to our IPPBX. On the phone itself, we can also disable ping to stop uh, hackers communicating with the IP phone and basically finding out that the IP phone is there and then giving them, them the ability to try and hack into the IP phone. By disabling ping, we stop that ability to know that, so that for the hackers to know that that phone is actually alive and, on the, and running on the network. Some of the more advanced uh, security features as well is 802.1x authentication, vLanding support, open VPN support, and also the ability to actually disable the second port on the phone. So if the phone is being used in a receptionist area or an area where people have public access to the phone, being able to disable that second port is a big plus. Okay, now some of the traditional provisioning and installation features that we see on all the 
other models of Yalink phones, which we also have on the T4 series, is obviously the manual configuration of IP phones. We have multiple auto provisioning methods. We can do it via Yalink's RPS service. We can use the zero SP touch or zero speed touch method. We have provisioning via plug and play. We have provisioning options via DACP using option 43 or option 66. And we also have the traditional what you only call phone flash method, which is a manual configuration or manually entering a, a server address either via HTTP, HTTPS, TFTP, or FTP. Now, in regards to the mounting option on the T4 series, all the phones can either be desktop mounted or they can also be wall mounted. So when using it on the desktop, as I said earlier, we have the ability to actually change the angle of the phone. And all of the T4 series also come with an optional wall mount bracket. Now the wall mount bracket doesn't come with the phone, it is an optional item. Now one thing to mention here as well with the T4 series is the power supplies. Power supplies are not given with the IP phones, they're also a separate item. So if you do need to use a power supply, if you're not powering the phone from a PoE switch, you will need to buy the power supply separately. And you can you can talk to the sales, the alloy sales guys about that. They can give you pricing for the brackets and also for the um, power supplies. Okay, moving on to some of the new phones that are going to be released shortly by Yealink. We have two more phones going to be released this year in the T4 series. We have the SIP T41P, which is the lower end phone of the T4 series. Again, this is a grayscale colored screen with a 2.7 inch LCD screen. The major difference between the SIP T41 and the SIP T42G is that the SIP T41P only has a fast Ethernet switch, no gigabit support. So the, tip, the SIP T41P will be available sometime in September. SIP T42G is already released and in mass production. We are taking orders for the SIP T42G now. The SIP T46G we've been taking orders for about a month or so. We do have stock now of the SIP T46G. And last in the range at this point is the SIP T48G. The SIP T48G is a 7-inch touchscreen phone. And again, with Bluetooth support, and it's going to be available later in the year, sometime in Q4. OK, it's going into a bit more detail on the new range of T40 series phones. The SIP T41P again has a 2.7 inch monochrome graphical display, dual port fast Ethernet switch, again the same as the SIP T42G, uh, sorry, also supports three SIP accounts, also supports up to 15 paperless DSS keys, again five keys can be programmed on the physical phone and the sixth key is used to change between the pages. Again, we have headset support via the headset jack on the back of the phone, and we also have wireless headset support via the EHS. All of the T4 series, and again, the same for the T41, support the Optima HD voice. This basically allows support for G722 wideband codecs, and has also passed the TIA 920 HD voice certification. And this phone, again, is also wall mountable with an optional wall mount bracket. SIP T48G 
is the high-end color touchscreen IP phone from Yealink. It has a 7-inch screen with an 800 by 480 pixel color display. Supports up to six SIP accounts, the same as the 46G. Has up to 29 soft DSS keys. Again, a dual port gigabit Ethernet switch. And the ability to add Bluetooth support via the optional USB dongle. All right, now just looking at the comparison between the four models of the T4 series phones from Yealink, we can see that the main differences between the models are the screen size, the number of DSS keys, and whether the phone has a fast Ethernet or a gigabit Ethernet ports. So the T41 and the T42 are very similar phones, except for the gigabit interface on the T42 and only the fast Ethernet interface on the T41. TIP T41 and T42 don't support the expansion module. SIP T46G and 48G will support the expansion module and can support up to six expansion modules. And as I stated earlier on, if you do use more than two expansion modules, you do need to power each of the additional expansion modules via a power supply. Okay, moving on to the next slide and I think Carl is now going to take over and look at some of the value proposition of the new T4 series IP phones from Yalink. Thanks very much, Scotty. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the uh, some of the uh, market is marketing issues to do with the new T4 series. Um, so what we're looking at here really is the overall value proposition for for T4 series phones. Um, Looking at the uh, 41, 42, and 46 uh, at this point, because the 48G is still a little way out yet, 41 is much closer. Um, really, the target markets that we're looking at here are f are really putting the T41P, the fast Ethernet-based phone, um, as an entry-level phone um, for general phone users um, in uh, in an organisation. Um, and this is quite an exciting um, uh, uh, entry point for a, a good, um, well-featured entry-level phone because um, unlike most phones that are pitched at the entry-level section of the marketplace, this is a phone with paperless DSSS uh, support. Um, so as we say, um, entry-level phone aimed at general um, phone users in organizations um, big plus is uh, that it's paperless DSS. Um, you can aim this at uh, your general staff who need uh, multifunction, multifunction DSS key capability, um, who need a good um, value-laden, price-competitive phone, um, and who possibly might be uh, um, might find that uh, an environmentally friendly, paperless, low-power phone. Uh, is is important to your end user customers. So if you go up a notch from the uh, SIP T41P um, up to the SIP T42G, um, here you're looking at a phone that gives you gigabit connectivity. Um, now this can be a, a really important um, feature for um, higher level users, um, um, people who are more sort of power users on, on the uh, company network um, and need gigabit connectivity to their, uh, uh, to their system. Uh, and certainly the T42G with its um, dual port uh, gigabit uh, connectivity will give that to, uh, to managers, professionals, uh, busy secretaries, so, you know, people, on, people on, uh, in your end user customers' sites who uh, are heavier phone users. So again, just reiterating those points, um, the SIP T42G uh, is the go-to phone um, for, your, for your general um, 
staff um, users who need a bit more power in the in the phone, um, need gigabit connectivity, um, but still, you know, they they need a good solid business grade phone with uh, a good level of features at a good price competitive um, price point. Uh, and moving up from there, the SIP T46G is definitely very much for your advanced business phone users, um, for executives, um, uh, company management people, um, and you know, your heavier power user um, people who need a, a good solid advanced phone with a lot of capability. Uh, this is the phone current in the current um, models that are released in the T4 series that give you the best design and, and quality level, um, give you a huge amount of capability um, on paperless DSSS keys, 27 um, paperless DSS keys, and give you your Bluetooth support as well for those people who need to be uh, mobile around the desk uh, and have a, blue bar, uh, a Bluetooth capability uh, for audio into the phone. So looking at the, uh, continuing this, um, this topic of what the value proposition for the T4 series as a whole is, um, it's important to stress just how wide and advanced the general base feature set for all of the T4 series models are. I've, I won't go through all of these features here, but uh, in terms of in terms of advanced phone features, advanced network features, advanced security features, there's a huge uh, comprehensive level of features in, in all three of those areas. Um, uh, for example, in, in, um, in phone features, all the phones support BLA and SCA, SCA and BLF. Uh, they all support ACD. They've all got support for LDAP directories voicemail, message rating indicator, um, etc. Um, and if you look at uh, the entry level phones, the T41, uh, the 41P and the 42G, um, a lot of these features you'll struggle to find on competing product products that are uh, aimed at the entry level uh, market. Uh, in terms of the advanced network, network features, again, good, solid, comprehensive level of features um, uh, on the network side, uh, really good uh, quality of service support, support for HTTPS, OpenVPN, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, some really good, solid features there. Uh, and as we heard from Scotty in the main part of the um, uh, presentation, um, very uh, rugged security support across all models. Um, and we've listed the, you know, the the main security features there for the for the uh, T4 series as a whole. Now, what these this base level of features that go across all models adds up to is a really high uh, level of um, functionality for the amount for the dollars that you spend on these phones. And we'll look at some uh, pricing information in a moment. So here we go. Where do these where do these phones fit? Uh, at the moment in the, in the, out there in the Australian marketplace in terms of dollars. Um, look at the two phones that are currently available, the SIP T42G and the 46G. So, um, I guess whenever we start talking about price comparisons, we're always putting our neck on the, on the chopping block a little bit because um, you know, not everybody's totally uh, upfront about their um, their pricing levels and of course what's happening on the street uh, can be totally different from what people are saying about their RRPs. Um, the pricing we got here um, is current this month, um, uh, looking at some of the competing pro um, products that the Airlink SIP T42G stacks up against. Um, and these are averages of what we're, what we're seeing um, at street level as measured by online of uh, pricing that's available online. So you'll find that the three models that we come across uh, a lot compared to the SIP T42G are the, uh, the uh, Cisco 6945G, um, Polycom Soundpoint IP560, and one of the newer Polycom phones, their VVX310. 
In fact, the VVX310 is so new, we can't actually find any Australian pricing online for that phone at the moment. So the pricing you see in there is, uh, is US um, pricing uh, at this stage. So um, the recommended retail price for the Yearlink SIP T42G is 204 at this point. Uh, and you can see that's under all of those three competing phones, and in fact, well under um, all of them. Uh, even the uh, Cisco 6945G is uh, is over $50 uh, uh, above this above this product. The VVX310 will be closer when uh, when we start to see it uh, really come to the fore in the Australian market, but still more expensive. Um, and you will see with the VVX310 when it's when it does become available in the in the marketplace, uh, it doesn't support IP version six, and it only has support for six DFFS keys, uh, as opposed to 15 on the 42G. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, 46G and some pricing information there. Competing models here that we've identified um, as slotting in against the T46G uh, are one of the older models from the old Linksys range, the Cisco SPA 525G, uh, Cisco's 7945G, a phone that's been around for some time now, Polycom Soundpoint IP670, and the new Polycom VVX410. Um, and again, I'll make the point that the, the uh, Polycom VVX410 is so new, we can't find Australian pricing online for that. Um, so what you're looking at here is USS, US RRP pricing. And again, the, uh, the uh, VVX410 is uh, closest to the uh, SIP T46G. In fact, it's a little bit under, $7 under at this point. Um, but note, again, only supports IP version 4, not version 6. Only 12 DSS um, paperless keys as opposed to the 46G's uh, 27 paperless um, keys. And no USB support to, uh, to support dongles for Bluetooth headsets. So um, some important uh, features that the 46G has that the VVX410 do does not offer. To be fair to the VVX410, it is a 12-line phone, uh, as opposed to the six lines on the um, on the T46G. Um, uh, but then I guess you have to ask yourself how many people really need 12 lines. Um, so look, I think um, I think it's a fair reading to make um, uh, on both the 42G and the 46G that they're both really well priced. Um, against the uh, against the competing equivalent products that are out there in the marketplace, um, and Yellink really set out their stall with the T4 series to pull together a range of uh, of IP phones with a really good, clean, ergonomic, um, and elegant design, with a high level of base features. Um, comprehensive features on right through the whole of the range and really good um, price points on the individual models and I think um, from the information that we're showing you here you can see that that's that's borne out in the pricing the competitive pricing information so that uh, concludes the main parts of what we what we set out to uh, show you guys in the presentation so let's uh, let's go on to some some uh, items about how we're going to support our channel with the new T4 range. Um, first thing, uh, and probably one of the, the most important messages that we'd like people to uh, receive out of this webinar, um, we, Alloy is running um, a reseller demo program on the uh, T4 phones. Uh, at this point on the existing available models of SIP T42G and the SIP T46G. We have 30 units each of these two models um, that are going to be available um, to resellers. We're making these phones available to you guys um, in the webinar. Uh, these are phones that are strictly for NFR use only. Um, we do ask that you commit to completing a test report that, we'll, that we provide with the phone. But if you want to take a really good 
close look at the phone, have a phone to play around with, to use, to see its capability, to test it out, and to keep totally free um, once you've finished, um, then please let us know that you're interested, um, and we'll talk to you about um, offering you a 42G or a 46G free demo phone. Now, you'll, you can get in touch with Alloy, with your account manager, to inquire about the reseller demo program on these phones. Uh, you'll also see at the end of this webinar a little survey coming up, come up that you can answer. And one of the thing, one of the questions in there is a question about whether you, you're interested in the reseller demo program. So um, we'd hope that uh, a lot of you guys um, come to us and uh, and take up this offer for the uh, SIP T42G and SIP T46G free reseller demo program. Just complete the short survey when you when you when you leave this. Uh, webinar and we'll get that ball rolling for you. Okay, another way you can get some exposure to the new T4 series of phones is to, if you're interested in the 3CX um, uh, IP, uh, Windows based IP TBX um, software that we now um, distribute here in, uh, in the ANZ region. Um, we're running training in, um, in Sydney and, uh, and Melbourne. Um, in uh, August, uh, there are paid spaces left in uh, in three of those four sessions, um, and we do use we will be using the T4 phones um, as part of uh, as part of the technical training workshops for 3CX in those sessions. So, um, obviously, the main interest there would would need to be for you uh, on 3CX, but um, it also gives you the op the option to. Uh, uh, to have a look at the T4 phones in the flesh. Um, and I'll take the opportunity just quickly while we're talking about these uh, courses um, for our customers over in New Zealand. You guys often um, get a bit of a backseat on these, on these opportunities. Um, just to let you know, we are looking right at the moment at, web, at making 3CX training uh, available for you guys uh, in New Zealand. And we'll get to you on that as soon as we've uh, made some arrangements. And uh, I guess one of the final things uh, for me to mention um, uh, in this webinar is um, our next webinar um, about Yearlink um, products and Yearlink phones. We will be running a webinar on Thursday, August the 8th, um, and it will be presented by Scott, Scott Young, our um, technical services manager. Um, and our next webinar on August the 8th will be about Yearlink's RPS service um, and uh, uh, an in-depth look at order provisioning support um, for all Yearlink phones, um, T4s, the T3 series, and the T2 series as well. So any of you who uh, are interested in looking at, at that, uh, getting some information on that topic, um, there's a link there to our webinar page um, on the Alloy website. Hop onto that page, and you can see more detail about the about the webinar, and uh, and also uh, register for the uh, for the webinar as well. Okay, well, um, that finishes our uh, our uh, the, the main part of our presentation. Um, and I hope you guys have got a lot of value out of this. Don't forget the free demo phone. Um, we're now going to throw open the uh, the webinar for audio questions, uh, and it's uh, and you can now, if you use your keyboard um, on your, your go to the webinar uh, dashboard, you can. Uh, you can click on your little raised hand symbol there um, to signify that you'd like to ask a question. Uh, and um, Scott Young um, or Elsa or Jessica from Yearlink um, will be here to, uh, to answer your questions. I will just mention uh, we had a text question from, uh, from Robbie, Robin over in New Zealand. Um, does the demo, does the demo Demo offer, free demo offer uh, on T42 and 46 extent to New Zealand. Um, we're looking to sort that out just at the moment, Robin. Um, I'll make a note of your question. Um, we will be contacting all uh, all of our uh, 
New Zealand Yelling Channel about this issue uh, very shortly, and but I'll make a, a note just to make sure that you get a, a specific reply on that in the next day or two. Okay, so any any questions? Uh, you'll you'll probably remember from the introduction that Elsa is one of Yearlink's um, senior technical support engineers. So um, technical questions uh, can uh, can be taken by Elsa as well. Okay, we've got a question from Bernard. Hi, Bernard. If you'd like to. Uh, if you'd like to uh, ask your question, as soon as I can get you unmuted. Now oh, there we go. Okay, Bernard, uh, if you'd like to ask your question. Can you hear us there, Bernard? Ah. He hasn't got a mic. <laughs> All right. Okay. That makes things a little difficult, Bernard. I can just about hear you. If you want to ask your question, I'll repeat it. Or if you want to send it in chat um, as a chat question, I can. Yeah, I. Yeah, I can. Okay. While we're waiting for Bernard to send his send in his question by chat, um, we just had a question come up by chat from Mark. Uh, Mark's asking: uh, Is the electronic hand, uh, is the EHS module uh, a combination for a lift or is it an, ele an electronic connection for the headset? Um, Elsa, let's let's hear from you on that one. Would you would you like to answer that question? Elsa, are you there? Scotty, maybe Yeah, you're hello. There. Hello. All right. Okay, Elsa. Yeah, Mike from yeah. Mike from e -Link. Hi. Okay, Elsa, you like to ask that, answer that question about the EHS? Hello. Hello, Carl. Yeah, for the first question about the EHS 36, uh, E-Link e have a product called EHS 36. Mm -hmm. It's for uh, electronic connection for the headset. And for the second question, uh, about the uh, are you looking to release any conference style phones? So uh, can kind of the the requirements are uh, for the product, and we are uh, we can do some research for the product and plan it, put it on our roadmap. And for the for the second question, and uh, what is the cost of the Bluetooth USB module? Maybe, maybe, who can help me? Uh, <laughs> um, the, cost, the cost of the USB module, uh, uh, Aloy will quote the, the, the price to you. Yeah, right, okay, I think that was actually Mike from, uh, from um, Yearling. Thanks for those answers, Mike. Yes, look, um, uh, the, the question about price on the EHS, we'll, we'll get back to you offline on, on that. Uh, on that pricing issue. Okay, any more, any more questions? Bernard, have we got? Yes, okay, right, Scotty. Bernard's question there, uh, Bernard's got a question there about conference style phones. Um, maybe you'd like to come in on which, that. Yeah, which Mike just kind of answered. Um, he said that if there is, um, that Yellink are looking into um, producing a conference style phone but there is no ETA on a release of, of that at this point. In regards to the cost of the Bluetooth USB module, what we'll need to do is we'll get one of the um, one of the sales guys to um, give you a call and let you know the, the cost. I don't have the cost off the top of my head at this point. Now, Lyndon, Lyndon's also got a question in regards to how we sign up for the demo modules, okay, which Carl's just answered. So there's, there'll be a survey at the end of the webinar where you can register your interest in obtaining a free demo phone. Also, you can talk to your account manager about it as well.
Okay, Scotty, there was uh, there was a question earlier on from from one of the from one of the guys um, about how many different pages you can see you can switch between um, for paperless DSS support on the different models. Um, yep. I know you went over that, but maybe you could just repeat that information. Yeah, all each of the phones all support three pages. So depending on the amount of physical keys they have, will depend on how many DSS keys can be configured. So all so the T46, T42, T41 all support three screens, and the EXP40 will support up to two screens. Okay, so looks like we're beginning to get towards the end of uh, questions there. Um, so this is your opportunity to. Uh, to ask any further questions. Do we have anything else from, from uh, any other questions from people? Now's your chance. Stick up your hand. Okay. Question from Brenda. Brenda, I'm just unmuting you. Um, and what is your question, Brenda? Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, are you loud and clear. Excellent. Hey, you, you mentioned that these ones are um, IPv6 enabled. What's going to happen to the old or the, the other styles of phones? like the, the T2 series and that. Are they going to be obsolete soon? Scotty, you want to come in on this one? Yeah, OK, I can answer that. So Yealink will be still moving forward with the T2 series and the T3 series. T2 and T3 will still continue to sell. Um, obviously, the T4 series is, is a newer range and also targeted as more of a, a higher end phone. Um, so yeah, T2 series and two T3 series will still be um, will still be selling and still be um, all firmware development and everything will still be done on the T2 and T3 T3 series. I think um, I think another point that's important to make about this issue of IP version four versus IP version six, um, I and mean, this is wrapped up in the in the issue of of um, the shortage of IP version 4 uh, addresses um, for, uh, for accessing uh, the internet and uh, that's probably been a little bit overplayed out there. There's been quite a lot of, uh, of uh, media commentary uh, about that would, would, would you'd, you'd, be, you'd be almost thinking that we're all about to be in a situation where we can't get onto the internet because we're all running out of IP version 4 addresses. I don't know whether any of you guys have seen these sites where they're actually doing a countdown on how many IP version 4 addresses are left and you see them all disappearing and melting away in front of your eyes. Um, I think realistically it's going to take a little bit longer than, uh, than people think and than a lot of people think for IP version 4 to become obsolete. Uh, and also there's there is, I believe, and maybe Scott could comment on this, backwards co compatibility between version 6 and version 4, is that correct? Yeah, any any device that supports version 6 also supports version 4, so there's, there's, yeah, there's no issue there. So, um, the Series 2 and Series 3, Series two, T2 and T3 funds um, that Yearlink uh, have uh, had uh, available for some time uh, are not going to be going away anytime soon and will uh, remain part of what uh, Yearlink offer. Does that answer all your questions, Brenda? Yeah, no, that's great because we sell a lot of the T2s at this stage, but um, liking the look of these T4s for sure. Okay, well, look, keep going. Thanks for your support on the T2s. Um, keep going on them because they'll be available for a uh, a considerable time to come yet, and um, we'd love you to have a look at the T4s as well. Okay, any final questions? Um, any final questions? Okay, looks like um, that does it for today. Um, I'd like to uh, to thank uh, Elsa and Jessica for their for their uh, involvement in the in the webinar, and certainly a big thank you to all you guys who've attended. Uh, and a final reminder: um, as you leave the webinar, you will see a little survey come up. One of the questions on that is: Do you uh, do you want to um, be part of the free 
T4 series demo program. Um, so if you are wanting to do that, please make sure you tag that survey. You can also ring up your Al or your account manager um, if, uh, if you prefer to do that. Um, and we thank you for your time today. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at the next um, Yearlink webinar on August the 8th um, about auto provisioning. Thank you very much.